Blog Talk Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros. And a welcome to a special edition here on Beaver the Ring Radio. I'm your host, Dave Duenas. Um, unfortunately, I can't get in, can't get on the show on my mic, so I got to do it on the phone. I have this uh, interview scheduled here with Buddy McGirt, trainer of uh, Sergey Kovala. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing it on the phone, and I apologize for the uh, quality of the interview that we're going to have right now. But it's the best that I can do at this moment. Um, I-, I tell you what, though, um, just really quick. Uh, uh, before I call him in, I, I, I wanna, I wanna um, give my condolences to the family and and the boxing world for just hearing yesterday the news of uh, Patrick Day, uh, who was on the undercard of uh, of Usyk and Witherspoon, who just passed away at the age of 27. It's a tragic thing in our sport. Um, even before his death, uh, I saw on Sunday night a fighter that I had been covering uh, from the beginning of me covering the sport as being part of the media outlet, uh, Eloy Prince Perez, who passed away as well. Um, you know, it's it's a reality of our sport. Um, it, it's something that as a, as, a, as a fan and a person that's involved in the sport, uh, whether you contribute in buying tickets or you contribute in the behind the scenes, uh, into helping these fighters get these contracts and upcoming fights and get try to get them to to the point of what they're hoping to reach in their career. It's a reality that we have to face. It's a sad one. It's a tragic one. Um, it's really not much to say about it, but like I said, it, it has to be, uh, it, you know, hits hard. To anybody that have followed and watched these fighters train hard and and go through the obstacles that they have to go through to reach the point that they're trying to reach to get. Anyways, um, let's, uh, let's call in uh, uh, Buddy McGirt, and let's dissect this upcoming, this upcoming fight here. And uh, let's, see, uh, let's see what he's got to say. Fuck, I know Alvarez. And... Hello. Hey, buddy. Hey, welcome to the show here on Leave It a Ring, man. I really appreciate you taking the time this early in the morning, actually, to come on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So, big fight, obviously, for everybody, not just for your, you and your fighter, but for the whole world. Um, I wouldn't say it was anticipated because it was kind of out of left field. I mean, that's just kind of how I felt. When, when first when they were flirting with it, you know, when they were talking about it um, in their negotiations going in with uh, Danny Jacobs, at first I thought uh, they're just kind of you know seeing what what the reaction of people, but then they did it. Then they went for it. Let, let me ask you this: what what do you think they see in your fighter that they think they could take on? I think they see a shot fighter. And uh, which is okay, you know what I mean. So, right, a shot fighter with a bigger name than all the other champions in the matter with division. So now we just got to do what we got to do, and everything else will take care of itself. Now we're definitely going to get in. I, I want to definitely get into some scenarios of plans that could possibly happen on that night, November second, number November second. Um, but let me ask you this. What what is it about Canelo? What do you think Canelo has done, in your opinion? Because I I I think I can't seem to put my finger on it. To say that he's ready to make such a leap, that he's even ready to face a guy that they believe may be shot at 175. What what do you think? What have you seen that that makes you guys believe that he's a dangerous opponent coming up on 160 Listen, to 175? Canelo, Canelo's a hell of a fighter. 
you know, and he's fought everyone they put in front of him. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, except for Triple G, I mean, he overwhelmed everybody. Besides Triple G and Floyd, he was able to overwhelm everybody. You know what I mean? They just weren't on his level, which is not his fault. Right. I mean, but he can fight. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say he can't because he can't. I think he's one of the top guys out there today, you know, but I just feel in my heart that um, Sergey's going to pull the rabbit out of the hat. How do you get, how do you get your fighter back, buddy? How do you get him back focused and confident? He came off, you know, he, he had a near death with, uh, with Anthony Yard, but he's had two losses, two TKOs on his record. One from Ward and one from Alvarez. You obviously bought him back on the second rematch with Alvarez. You had him boxed. You had him moving. But how difficult, you know, because you're the one that's right there in front of him. You're the one that has to pass. How difficult is it to get a fighter back into a confidence mode to start believing in yourself? Because, you, you know, you have to think that when a fighter loses, a bit of their confidence goes with that, right? Yeah, but, you know, the key to it is you don't talk about it. You leave the past in the past. You don't even bring it up. We don't even talk about those fights at all. Even when we trained for the second Alvarez fight, even when we trained for the second Alvarez fight, we didn't mention the first fight once. There's no need. It's, it's, it's behind you now, so why dwell on it? Right. Absolutely no. I, I agree. I agree. You, you know, there's a lot of talk about weight. Is there, is there, has there been any stipulations about the weight? I mean, are you guys no. allowed, are you guys at, at a cutoff limit or, sir, you can come in way over 175? Everything is on the up and up. That's why I respect Canelo even more. Wow. Was that surprising for you, to you guys? I mean, did you guys... Uh, you know, did you guys, was that kind of like, whoa, okay. No, because I, I think Canelo is a warrior. And, you know, when you when you start making certain stipulations, it takes away from the intensity, it takes away from the magic. You know, like when the guy says, oh, I fight you out to catch weight. You lose a little fire when you do that. I think anyway, I think the the, the, the anticipation of the match itself loses a little fire fire. Because like, oh he's right. gotta fight him, but he's gotta he's gotta come down three pounds under his normal fight weight. I mean that takes a little yeah. fire out of the fight. If you believe in yourself no, I, I, a, at the end of the day if you can fight you can fight no matter how much you weigh. Are you are you are you surprised that, that most betters are going with with Canelo, I mean, I, I'm I'm a bit surprised. I believe that it's a really fifty fight. Um, I'm I'm actually leaning with Kovala in this fight a, a bit. I'll, I'll give you my reasons why, but let me ask you: Does that surprise you guys? I mean, to hear that he's he's been campaigned at 150 75 for for a long time to be called the underdog uh, to a newcomer to the division. This is boxing, man. Anything's possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Your your fighter, you're obviously the taller guy, the bigger guy. When you watch fight tapes of Canelo, if you guys do watch fight tapes of Canelo, what do you, what do you guys watch the most? His winning streak or We don't we don't watch fight tapes. I don't. I don't. I don't uh, watch fight tapes. I've seen him fight enough. What? So you go just basically off of memory of what you've seen that he's done. Listen, at this stage, at this stage of the game, right? If you've been in the game for mm-hmm. a long time, and if you got to sit and study fight tapes of fighters today, then I believe there's some wrong. I believe you're in the wrong business. Hmm. What do you think that? is going to be 
the the best of Kovala on November 2nd. I mean, I, I, I've seen him go great to the body. I've seen him have a fantastic jab. His right hand is obviously the crushing uh, point of his career. God knows where he's at. Uh, but we don't have just a typical uh, fight here, uh, right, buddy? I mean, uh, Kovala is, is an is a well a, 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 a developed fighter. He, he's not a one trick pony. But what do you think you oh, guys need to work on? This move? Yeah, we got to work on everything, not just one thing, everything. <laughs> And that's what we're doing. We're working you know, on everything, not just one specific thing. We're working on everything. You, you know what I what I noticed when uh, Canelo fought? When you brought up, he had brought up Triple G. What I noticed with Canelo was that he was very successful against a guy coming forward, pressuring him. He's able to bob and weave. He's able to make you pay and counter. But what he always had difficulties with, with is chasing the guy down. Um, but but in all honesty, at six foot, at 175, and he might come in, you know, five, seven, eight, even ten pounds heavier. Uh, do you guys try to rely on your legs and gas yourself out, or you know, because that's been kind of the 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 you know the the topic among fight the fight community is that Kovala sometimes gasses out. Do you guys risk that, or do you just go forward and 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 just worry about landing punches, not worry about his defense? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, whatever Canelo presents to us, we're gonna have an answer for. So we're, like I said earlier, we're prepared for any and everything. How stoked up is is Kovala for this fight? How up for uh, is he for this fight? It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's higher than it was for the Alvarez rematch. Because he knows he can really redeem himself and some with this, with this fight. Do you guys expect? You guys, let me ask you this. I mean, huh? You know, everybody keeps talking about body shots, body shots, and and, and I saw you in uh, the conference <laughs> yesterday. You, I said, dude, nobody likes body shots. I thought it was, that was funny as well because I said this to other people. I'm like, who, who likes body shots? Who likes taking shots? To the nobody. Body? But. As, yeah, nobody, right? But at five eight, you really think that? I mean, that's a pretty risky thing for a guy for five eight to try to come in and and close that that distance right away without even knowing or feeling the punch of a hundred and seventy five pounder, right? I think I think Canelo's going to do a little bit of everything. I don't think he's just going to try to fight one way. You know, he's got a very smart I don't think team. he either. Right. You know, he's got a very smart team, so I don't see him coming out trying to outgun. Him. Sergey early. I don't see that. You know what I mean? So you just have to be prepared for any and everything that comes our way. That's it. You guys got you guys this training camp. So do you switch up the the, the, the sparring partners? You know, from from fast guys, the movers, and pressure guys. I mean, how do you work with that? We do. We got a little bit of everything. Fast guys. Guys that puts pressure on and make them fight. You know, I mean, a little bit of everything. Because we're preparing for any and everything. So when you prepare for war, you prefer, you prepare for any type of attack. Now, we're I know that be like Hannibal Yard was it. The Alps. We're going to be like Hannibal and come through the Alps and catch him from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now I know that Anthony Yard was a tough, tough fight. I mean, that was a brutal fight. You guys, you guys got the victory. Yeah. Uh, the experience kicked in. The Warrior and, and Kovalev kicked in. And I know that you guys said that, hey, this fight is actually works for you guys because you never left training camp. You guys are still there. Uh, uh, it rolled over. Uh, but there's got to be a well, little bit of damage to his body at the moment, right? <laughs> Listen, if you walk down the street, you get damaged in your knees. So, <clears throat> but my thing is this. After the fight, he got time off. And now that we're back in camp, it's less we didn't have to go out and get guys to make us spar 10, 12 hard rounds. We have to do all that because we're already in shape. You 
You know, nobody's been able to, to put down Canelo. Nobody's been able to, to stop him. He's been outboxed. How how big right. is that for you guys? How, I mean, how how much of that is on your guys' mind that you need to? Oh, say that again. Nobody really, has what? Nobody has what? Has has stopped Canelo. Has nobody's ever dropped him? Nobody's ever made him. You know, I mean, he's not, the kid's out hasn't been knocked out. He's credited for it, such a great chin. How, we're not, we're, how much we're not does that motivate you? We're not looking to do that. We're just looking to win the fight. I can't wait for this fight. I, 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 I'm really excited about this fight. I think <coughs> Styles may fight. Uh, I'm very curious of how Canelo handles uh, a powerful 175-pounder like Kovala. They call him the crusher for a reason. Um, I'm very curious to see how he reacts to it and how he changes his game plan. And I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see what he does with your guys' game plan if he – if he tries to utilize it by, by closing the distance and smothering uh, uh, Kovala the way Ward did, I just don't see that happening just because Ward was a big kid himself. I'm not saying that, Col- I'm not saying that Canelo isn't, but I just see a different scenario, you know. Um, if, if you were not well, training Kovala my- right now, is this a 50-50 fight in your opinion? If you, if you had, you know, no, no, no part of this, no, no dog in the race, no horse in the race. Is this a fifty-fifty fight in your opinion? If I had no dog in the race, I wouldn't even watch the race. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, there you go, Buddy McGirt. You're on leaving the ring, buddy. I want to thank you, man, for taking the time to talk to us here. I can't wait for the fight. Um, I appreciate all the the answers that you gave to my questions. Um, well, we'll see you on November second, brother. All right, you got to see you there. All right. Well, there you go, Buddy McGirt here on Leaving the Ring. Um, You know, a lot of times you're not going to get everything you want to hear from from the trainer or the camp about uh, certain strategic plans that they're going to have. You can only speculate. Um, And you can tell that that Buddy doesn't really want to give you everything. They're saying they're working overall on everything. and I expected that, you know. Um, I, I expected that they're not going to give up their game plan. Uh, in my head, I could see a few things that they can do and, and capitalize, uh, which is always used in the jab, uh, uppercut when uh, Canelo does try to come in. Um, you know, move. Make Canelo feel uncomfortable. Make him come forward. That's the time that we've seen Canelo uh, not successful. in the, the first and second fight with Triple G – uh, his success is when Gennady Golovkin was coming forward, making him miss punches, and he was making him pay. Whereas when Golovkin reverted to boxing, Canelo was uh, was slow to respond. It forced him. It forced him to go first, and it forced him to commit, which Golovkin was able to capitalize. Uh, same thing when he faced Floyd Mayweather. Now we we've seen Kovla. We've we've seen how he can box when that's part of the game plan. In the rematch with Alvarez, after being knocked out in the first match, uh, getting in with camp with Buddy McGirt, first fight with with each other, being with each other, uh, he boxed. Uh, even before that, we've seen Kovla box. We we know that he's got a boxing IQ, a very good one. The amateur pedigree kicks in when needs be. So this fight here between two very smart fighters that understand their strengths, it, it, it makes it just that much more fun to want to watch it because we want to see who can dominate, who can, who can take over, who can implicate whose plan on that night. I'm hoping for fireworks. I think we're going to have spurts of it. I don't think we're going to have an all-out war, which we saw with Derm- uh, Dermanchenko versus Gennady Golovkin. It's completely different. you got a bigger man that's, that Canelo's facing. I applaud him for taking on such a big task as we're, what we're going to see. Um, I applaud him just like the way Buddy McGirt said that. There is no weight uh, clause. There is no stipulation of, of weight coming in. 
he wants to go in with a with a a really big, dangerous 175, which many think that maybe he passed his prime at the end of his rope. But Anthony Yard thought the same thing. Now, Anthony Yard and, and Saul Canelo Alvarez are totally different fighters. You know, Saul has proven that he belongs in there with the best. He's fought some of the best. His res- resume is, is something to look at and go, ah, wow. Whereas Anthony Yard still had a lot of questions, you know, um, myself and a few others thought that Yard youth might have been able to take over. His power, his size was going to be the dominant of that fight, but we saw how Sergey Kovalev came back, how he was able to get himself back in, 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 from a hiccup that he was facing with Yard and how he was able to take it to a second gear, third gear. And that's something that, as a fight fan, Trainers, promoters, that's something that we watch and want to see is how does the fighter react when he's up against the wall? How does he claw out of there? And Sergey Kovala certainly showed us that when needs be, he's going to come out and swing and blazing to get himself out of there. And uh, he, obviously he knew that the big purse with Canelo was coming up. So he wasn't going to let that slip through his fingers or his gloves. Right. Again, I, I I see a lot of folks that are that are saying that this is the perfect timing to go after Sergey Kovala. Uh, some believe he's a shot fighter. Some say that you know he doesn't respond well to body shots. Well, who does? But the task is is, is going to be for Canelo to get to his body, and at five eight, uh, and with a six foot fighter who throws down the pipe with a right hand that's been able to put down his opponent with his right hand. He did it with Andre Ward in the first fight. He was able to put him down when Ward was trying to get low, get in the inside. So that's the task there that I have to see with Canelo. Can he do – can he get in that pocket? Can he hold his ground in that pocket to land body shots? And, and be able to receive the punches that Koval is going to throw at him. Because you got to remember, this is a 175 crusher, crusher, okay? You know, Gennady Golovkin was a big puncher at 160. But if we notice that he's, he's had major success against guys that are either on their way out of the division or on their way in, coming from 154 to test the water's at 160. So when he got in with Canelo, who was now a full-fledged 160 pounder, he was able to absorb those power shots. You know, so Kovala has has a long career of knocking out guys that have been in the division. You know, he's got a, a long career of of adjusting. Does he gas out? Absolutely. Does he fall apart sometimes when he doesn't get his way? When you take away or, 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 or nummify his best weapons? Absolutely. I like the mind frame with Vladimir Gert right now because he's basically what he's like. He's not taking in any nonsense. He's not hearing the negativity. He doesn't want to hear none of that. It's all a positive outlook. The camp is about being positive. You've seen the big smile on Kovala. Um, even though they went to, a, you know, to the end against Anthony Yard, they're still looking at the upside, which is the big prize is Saul Canelo Alvarez. And I think that's a I think that's a great and smart idea as the trainer because you gotta keep your man confident, you gotta keep him believing that his that his spot in history is right there still for the taking. That you just found another name to be added on the list of another man's resume. I think it's going to be a great fight November 2nd between the both both warriors stepping in. I think that boxing needs more of this. Boxing needs guys that want to jump and leap and take a major challenge. Sometimes it's a little like, ooh, I don't know about that one. I think everybody wasn't too... 
push back about the idea when Canelo was talking about getting in with Kovalev, which I thought was a little bit weird. Whereas when Mikey Garcia was talking about Errol Spence, it was because Errol Spence was, you know, he's in his prime. The imagination with Errol Spence at the moment, you know, is he's the best welterweight in the world. Unless he gets in with uh, Terrence Crawford. Really quick about Errol Spence. Uh, got a DUI, flipped his Ferrari over on many times, uh, walked away with no broken bones, uh, called himself an Iron Man on Instagram. Youth is a beautiful thing. So when you start getting older, start being wiser and start thinking, you know, a little bit more. <laughs> you know, um, you're always going to hear that saying, boys will be boys and kids will be kids or whatever the case is. But hopefully he learned from, from his ex- this experience because he's definitely going to pay for it in the courts, in the system, and he didn't harm himself or anybody else. It would have been very tragic. Um, could have ended his career and could have ended somebody else's, you know, precious life. You know, we have to be appreciative every day. You know, I go into work sometimes and I'm smiling and laughing and, you know, somebody – I see somebody with their face with, with a big frown, and I always tell them, be happy, man. You woke up today. Somebody else did it. Anyways, going back with Kovala and Canelo, uh, I'm definitely going to drop my corner to corner. I'm going to give you my scenario I, of what both camps need to bring to the table on fight night with their strengths, their weaknesses. Um, my, my schedule is just crazy. I'm um, right now up early. I had the reason I did this interview so early in the morning because I had to go to work, and I couldn't fit this slot with Buddy McGirt uh, later. Um, so I, I hope you guys appreciate it. I know it was a really short interview. Um, it was just only a few questions that I had for Buddy McGirt. So, I, you know, I'm pretty sure I missed some stuff. I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to email me and like, oh, you could have asked him this, could have asked him that. Um, I didn't want to overwhelm him. I didn't want to make it seem like, you know, try to – pull something out, you know, for a headliner, because in all reality, we both know that he wasn't going to give us the complete game plan of what they're going to do on Saturday, November 2nd. Um, I just, there was just a few things that I wanted to see that I could maybe pick out of the, out of the hat and draw him in, but he's a seasoned vet. He understands, like he said, listen, if you're watching tape, you don't belong in this business. I agree to disagree. <laughs> I mean, everybody has a different method of how they um, can incorporate a game plan. Um, but, hey, you know, Buddy's one of, the, one of the greats. What can we do? What can we say? Can't argue with one of the guys that's been in this game for so long. He's been in the ring. He's fought some of the best. He's had some of the best fighters under his tutelage. So there's no, nothing you can really – you can't argue with that, right? Not definitely argue with that. But I tell you what, I've met Buddy McGirt in person, great guy, great sense of humor, uh, full of life. Um, full of knowledge, and when the time is right, he's, he's, he, he opens up. He opens up like a book, and he lets you, want to, he lets you know what you want to know. Uh, but I think at this time, at this moment, since they're so close to November 2nd, they're going to keep the pages a little tighter before they start revealing concerns and thoughts. Maybe we can get them on after, whether they win or lose. And here – the process of, of getting of, of, of going into the fight, you know. Um, again, my name is Dave Winnis here. I'm leaving the ring. I uh, miss everybody's calls. I love everybody's emails. Uh, I appreciate the feedback with Evan Rotowski's, uh, uh the Fisnados, uh with Kurt, with the Boston Esquire. Um, There's a, there's a new podcast out there before I get off the air, uh, The Fighting Fix with Johnny. Um, I'll tweet his uh, handle right now. Um, dude, is he, he, this kid's a good I, – I, he just did a show last week, which I, I, I might have to kind of copycat a bit, uh, the state of the game. I mean, he didn't call it the state of the game, but that's basically his rundown is the state of the game of the weight division, and he tells you who's an up and up on that division and what fights are coming up in that division, who he's looking forward to, and I really enjoyed that take because it's kind of a lost take that nobody's doing that I know of. I could be wrong, but, you know, that's doing at the moment. So big up on, on Johnny, man. Uh, love the show. Continue doing your, your fight fix. I don't know. Hopefully maybe – I don't know. Maybe we can bring him on to the Leaving Ring uh, Network and have him on here, and you guys can get a taste of what, what I'm hearing. I, I'm really enjoying that show. Anyways, I'm your host, Dave Duenas, here on Leaving the Ring. Hopefully here you'll hear from me very soon. And uh, anyways, don't drink and drive because you will spill your beer.